gonna play that beat.
also rock the steps of the Lord today. Lead us in Sunday school on today. Amen. It's something about Sunday school. Amen. Sunday school is something about Sunday school. It's where we can club and fellowship with one another and learn from one another. And we can learn some really good stuff, huh? Jack, what you think? Let me give you a microphone. I want to hear your voice today. We've been learning some stuff, huh? We've been learning some stuff by Brother Cross. Yes, we have. Amen. It's always good to learn from one another, amen, especially the Word of God. And as we finished up chapter 11 in 2 Corinthians on last week, oh, we, we learned a lot. We learned about the suffering of Christ. Amen. We, 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 we learned how Paul was so reckless and, and wanted them to understand what how important it is for them to tithe and offering, to pay their tithes and offering. And he was concerned about their faithfulness. And he wanted them to know that he suffered for Christ's sake. And we're going to go into chapter 12, 2 Corinthians. And it's going to be talking about the vision. The vision of paradise. The vision that Paul saw when he went up to the third heaven. That same vision that God released onto some of us. It's an awesome thing when God can release a vision unto you. Because it's something that's unexplainable. It's something that sometimes you don't even have the words to utter. Sometimes they don't even make sense. And if you told somebody else that say they believe or really don't believe, they'll think you're crazy, amen. And when Paul began to explain, he said, you know what? I can't even talk anymore about it because y'all will never understand. Because when God took me from the road of Damascus and allowed me to go on my way, he, and he also took me to third heaven. When I heard his voice, he gave me more direction. And he allowed me to understand those in, inexpressible words that I can't even express on to you today. Amen. And could you give me a little uh, value, please? Amen. See, that's what I like about unlimited grace. We all know how to work the mixer, amen. <laughs> too, not too many times you come to a ministry and women know how to work the mixer. Ain't that right, Quinko? We just sit back and just relax, amen. Amen, amen. So, uh, oh, okay, there we go, amen. Probably need to get another one. Thank you. Thank you. I think we, we better. Give me a little value on this one. Oh, okay. I think the other one sounded better. No, the other one, the battery. Oh, okay. So you can change it for another You hear Mavis? You hear Mavis, y'all? She says she, she, she knows what's going on. Amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, there we go. Amen. Amen. It's okay. But we're going to have got a little echo and a little echo back. Amen. Yeah, I want to be more clear. Amen. All right. This is a little better. Amen. So let's begin 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. It says, first, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word on today. We thank you, O oh God, that you're going to release, O oh God, your word unto us, O oh God, that we will receive it, O oh God, and your word will fall on good ground in the mighty name of Jesus. Decrease me that you increase, O oh God, that the Holy Spirit will move through me as I bring forth the Sunday school lesson, that we will all get the revelation that you've given up to us today, and that we can take this word and put it in our heart and apply it to our daily life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Amen. Okay, let me read. I want to go out of King James, if that's okay. I was reading in the NIV Bible here. Um, it is not expedite for me to doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one called up to a third heaven. And I knew such a man. Whether in the body or out the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. 
how that he was called up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. As you notice, I read three twice. Because Paul said, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out the body, I cannot tell, but God knoweth. Amen. What Paul is talking about here in these first um, scriptures, um, he said it's not expedite for me, doubtless to glory. When you look at the word glory there, it just means to boast. Amen. So Paul said, hey, I don't want to boast. But see, I like how the Amplified Version Bible puts it. It says, it is necessary to boast, though nothing is to gain by it. But I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. Amen. See, Paul understood that he needed to boast a little bit. Why? Because the false teachers and false apostles and false prophets, they were always trying to attack Paul. Amen. So he had to defend himself to, to protect the message. What message? The message that he brought to the church of Corinth. The truth, the gospel. So he had to make sure that he had to show up and bring forth this message, which was truth, amen. Because there were so many arrogant false teachers and false apostles and false prophets that tried to play games with the people, but Paul said, you know what? I can play a game or two with you, amen. So he began to boast, amen. See, also he talked about the visions and revelations, amen, that he saw of the Lord, amen. Anytime people, a person may say, I had visions or revelation that is simply just seeing something out of the extraordinary, amen. Something that is not usually seen, amen. Something that only our Lord Jesus Christ can give unto us, amen. See, revelation just means unveiling. Something that's unveiling that is not the norm, but something that is abnormal. Something that we don't see every day, amen. See, the false teachers, they were also claiming special directive revelation. You know, they also said that they saw a vision and that they had a revelation, but their revelation wasn't of God. Their revelation was only for three purposes, to have, um, to come against the church, and some of their visions and revelations was for sexual exploitation, amen, financial exploitation, amen. And then they always wanted to claim to have a um, special, unique revelation that they only can see and hear. Have you ever met any type of prophets and apostles and false teachers that said that this is only a revelation that God gave me? No matter how much you pray, God is not going to speak to you like he speaks to me. Amen. But don't you know if you get into that secret place with God and get into that place called prayer, God will speak to you. God will give you that same vision, that same revelation that he gives to the prophet. And then when the prophet comes, all he does is confirm what God has already given you. And that lets you know the true heart of the apostle or the true heart of the teacher or the true heart of the prophet to know that they're sent from God. And that they're not just falsely just um, saying that they had these visions and revelations. Because sometimes when the prophets come, you know, they want to exploit money from people. Amen. We talked about that on last week. Amen. It's nothing wrong if the Lord is putting it in your heart to be a blessing to the man or woman of God. But there's nowhere in the Bible where it says that the prophet should charge for a word. Amen. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says that in order to receive the revelation and the vision of God that only you see that you have to explore money. Amen. Financial gain. Amen. God forbid. Amen. There are nothing but heroines of the church. Amen. So Paul wanted them to understand that, hey, I'm speaking the truth. Amen. See, it also spoke to us that even when Lazarus died, remember when Lazarus died? Amen. He did not come back and speak about his experience. Amen. 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 The only person that was able to speak of their experience was who? Mary and Martha. Amen. Because they saw Jesus raise him from the dead. Amen. So that's a revelation. That is a, a vision. Because, see, really in the vision, Mary didn't really believe that Jesus was coming and was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Amen. But see, he said, why is you worried? Why have you so little faith? Amen. The revelation is, haven't you remembered and saw the things that I've done before? What about the miracles and the signs and wonders that came before your brother died? That's the revelation to know that he will rise again. Amen. 
So Paul wanted to make sure even in his experience of seeing visions and revelation, Paul did not want to make himself more higher than others. Amen. So sometimes he did not even share his experience. Why? Because it was words that were inexpressible. They wouldn't get it. They wouldn't understand. And then you know most of them, they were already judging Paul. Saying that how could he go to this third heaven when he was a murderer, when he was a killer, when he killed Christians? How, what type of special um, uh, past he got? Why do God love him so much? And he was this type of person. But don't you know, God loved those that's willing to change their lives. Amen. He's after the sinner. Amen. He don't need us that's already got ourselves together. I mean, he loves us, but he's after the sinner. He wants to be able to give them a life-changing experience. Amen. Of salvation. Amen. So we to five. Anybody have anything they want to add to the vision? Revelation? Amen. Five. Of such and one will I glory, yet in myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I would des I would desire to glory, I should not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he has seen me to be, or that he hear of me. Amen. See, Paul dare not boast in himself, but in God revelation of himself. Amen. Through both personal experiences and the truth of the gospel. Amen. Because Paul knew that he was not perfect. Amen. That he will only allow God to be glorified in him. See, there's a difference when we boast and we glorify in God than in ourselves. Amen. Because pride can step in. Amen. So we have to be careful when we begin to boast and, and glorify ourselves. Amen. We must first give God the glory. Amen. I love it when people always say, no, I give God the glory. You have to be careful. you got to give God the glory. You know, leaders, you cannot allow people to praise you and to lift you up and say, hey, because your visions and your revelation, you have done this. No, first of all, let me correct you, my brother, my sister. I love you. I'm just a vessel, but I give God the glory. It is God that allowed the revelation and the visions to work and speak through me, but it's God that gives the vision and it's God that gives the revelation. So let's go ahead and praise God and give him the glory. See, it's safe when you do it that way because pride cannot sneak in because we know the king of pride loves to creep in and that's how he creeps in through people praising you. So that's why you have to be careful and not allow people to praise you. Amen. It's okay, people, you know, they thank you and, you know, they, you know, but at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you don't leave that conversation without saying, you know what, no, 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 I give God the glory. Am I right, Aaron? I give God the glory. Because we can sometimes get, get like, we just, right? Don't we? And you know men and women of God that just, wow, I'm scared to even say anything to them. They so high. To where the visions and revelations that they got is like, it makes me look like a little pop. Amen? amen? But because I know who I am in Christ, amen, I don't feel that way anymore, amen? But I just pray for those men and women of God that sit so high and that feels that they have it all and they have all these spiritual visions and revelation when really they have nothing, amen? Because God loves those that are humble at heart, Amen? See, one thing Paul wanted to under, wanted them to understand, even in this passage of scripture, he was referring to experiencing the vision in the third, in the, in the third heaven, meaning in the third person, amen. So as not to make himself the focal point, amen. But rather, he simply wanted to say, it is spiritual visions and experiences and convincing to you that I can report some on my own, but guess what? This was something that I cannot report because it was something that's inexpressible. I don't even have the words. I don't really have, that, that's just like that when we receive the Holy Ghost. Now, most of you all, you don't really remember that encounter, really do you? You don't really remember the details of that encounter, right? Because it was so, it was just so, um, 
so, my God, I see expressible words. I don't even know the words to say myself because when you get to that place and you have that experience with God, it is something that you can't even explain. It's an experience that only you and God had in that time when you received the Holy Ghost. It is a language that is spoken that you may not have even, even spoken again, amen, but he changed your tongues, amen. So it is that type of fellowship, that type of communion between you and God, amen, when you receive that fresh Holy Spirit, amen. See, at the same time, we must understand that the first heaven, amen, it's understood to be in our atmosphere, the earth atmosphere, amen. The second heaven is in the heavens, amen. The third heaven, which also is referred to as in heaven or paradise, amen. So these are the realms that Paul said that from here on earth as he stand, but he went to the third heaven, so he had to go through two more realms, amen, something that was unexplainable, amen. But Paul had to push through some hardships before he got to see the third heaven. Amen? He had to complete some work before he saw the third heaven, right? But see, God opened up the windows of heaven. Amen? So that even Stephen, remember Stephen? He was able to glorify the Lord in the work that he done before he was stoned to death. Amen? He was able to see how how God moved in the realms, amen, of spiritual things to help him in the ministry that God had given unto him, amen. Paul just wanted them to understand that, look y'all, don't discredit me. Don't discredit me because he has shown them a lot. He has taught them a lot. But y'all allow these false teachers to come in here and teach y'all anything, Amen. He said, see, this is something that I don't even have to go and, and, and find on my own. But just look at the record. Look at my credentials. Look at the things that I have done to where I can go back and, I, and you can see the evidence from the churches that he built. Amen. From the ministries that he started up. Amen. So he said, you know what, false teachers, you know, just check my record. I'm not going to stoop to your game anymore. But... Church of Corinth, if y'all want to allow them to come in here and to turn y'all away from the truth, how be it? That's on you. But just remember that I gave you the truth. Amen. Remember that, you know, I don't want you to be a fool in this. Amen. But I give you the truth. Amen. Let me ask you all a question. Do you all believe that there's an out-of-body out of experience? Spiritual experience? Have any of you all had an out-of-body spiritual experience? Amen. Like most people say that they died and they was on the dying table. Then all of a sudden, they came back. Remember that the doctors called it and said DOA? But then God said, your time is not up. And they kept, their spirit came back in their body and they, 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 have you ever heard those stories, amen? Somebody died on a table, operating table, and came back to life. And they said it's something they couldn't explain. They went to a place, and all they talk about is like a big open door, a big heaven, amen? And when the door was getting ready to shut, God just pushed them out and said, no, it's not your time, Amen. Any out of spirits, or maybe you laying in your bed and God just give you a revelation or something. God does that, amen. That's how He does. He gives us all different experiences that we can share. But you know what? Everybody may not understand your experience. So when you tell your experiences to people because they're not where you are, their faith and their belief is not where you are, they don't believe in spiritual things, they'll look at you like you're crazy. Amen. Just like when you go into a car lot. And you tell the salesman, you say, you know, I know I really don't have the credit, but I know I ain't really got all the money that I need, but God sent me here today and he said, I'm going to get a car. Now, he's a salesman, and he's saying now, it takes your credit to be right. You're going to need a down payment, amen, and that's the only way you're going to get a car. But you're still in there saying, no, God said today I'm getting a car. My credit ain't right. I ain't got enough money. 
but I'm supposed to leave here with a car, and then God will take care of the rest. Have, any, have y'all ever experienced that? And when you went in, you got the car? Have y'all ever experienced that? None of y'all? Really? Amen. I experienced that on my last one, amen. My new car, amen. I ain't saying I ain't got no money, but I told them, hey, I got other things I gotta do. I ain't got no money today. I need to leave here with this car. Amen. I need this car today. I have no car. Amen. I need a car today. I don't really have that like credit because I don't have credit cards and, and everything like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm building my credit. I don't have bad credit. I just don't have no credit. But having no credit is like bad credit. Amen. So, but I need this car. As I sat in there and I began to talk. As I sat in there and said, you know, today God said, I'm getting this car. The man looked at me like I was a little crazy. But he said, okay, go down to the other lot and look. And I went to the other lot and I looked and I saw the car and I came back. I didn't even know how much it was, but I said, I want that car. And he said, okay, let's do the paperwork. And when he asked for the different documents, some of the documents I didn't even have. But I said, here, I'll give you a reference. Check my reference. I'll give you a name. Check my reference. My name is good. So he said, well, ma'am, no, we have to have the documents to make your file. I said, I don't have the documents, but I got credit. I got credit with people. So if you could call a person, they have, they, they'll be able to give you something more than just the paper. They'll be able to give you something through experience, them knowing me. Amen. And he listened, and he did that thing. And I waited for two hours. And after he called three people, amen, not even the papers that he needed, I didn't even have to get them. He came back out and said, okay, um, here go your keys to your car, amen. And then he gave me a, a gift card and said, um, you can go get you two new tires down the street, amen. So I knew that it was God, amen, that did that thing, amen. But I just went, and I'm going to tell you, I bypassed this car lot because I was like, well, they only got brand new cars. I ain't got credit. They're going to give me a hard time. I bypassed that car lot two days, and nowhere else was, was, was looking good for me. So I went there, and I said, you know what? My faith, let me just go here. And then my job that same day called me up, and I knew it was only... I thought it was like the enemy, but I, like, I know that God sometimes do things to move our faith. And my job was saying, you know, maybe you need to change companies. And I'm saying to myself, I'm sitting right here in this car lot. You're one of my references that you're going to have to vouch and say that I work for you. And you're telling me that you think because how I feel, because I brought some things to your attention that was right, that was true, that was honest, that maybe I need to find another company. Okay, I tell you what, I'll give you a call back. And thank God, I met another company, a better company, amen. But that could have kind of moved me from getting my car that day. Because it was shaking when you ain't have a place of appointment and they had to verify it, amen. But guess what? They didn't even verify my appointment. Amen? Because my bank record showed my income. Amen? It showed, it gave me credit for stuff that I didn't need. So I'm saying that to say that Paul had a record. Amen? He had a record, something that he didn't have to have just a piece of paper, but his evidence was what he completed and the miracle signs and wonders that came through him in these places that brought deliverance and healing and God's revelation of his word. Amen. That's seven. We're talking about the thorn in the flesh. How many of y'all experienced the thorn in y'all flesh? Come on now. So y'all had a, 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 pretty, a perfect life. Anybody have a thorn? I ain't talking about physically like a thorn. Like... You know, in your flesh. But you know, a thorn, I'm not talking about the physical stake or nail or something that could puncture you in your body. But I'm talking about a hardship. I'm talking about maybe even losing a loved one. Or I'm talking about.
something about maybe an addiction. You know, a lot of times when we hear the word addiction, we automatically just think of drugs. But don't you know that drugs is not the only thing that is addictive? You could be addicted to food. You could be addicted to buying too many shoes. Them ass came open back there. Amen. <laughs> you could be addicted to eat too much bacon. you or discredit you in me, meaning that you know that you're hungry 
bread that you're thirsty and that you need something to help you maybe pay your bills or you need help with something. And prosecution when you know that they're trying to prosecute you and trying to lead the people astray from you after all you have taught them. Being prosecuted just for being just a Christian. Being prosecuted just because you stand on the truth. Being prosecuted because you love God. Being prosecuted because you don't want to run with the wrong people. Being prosecuted because you want to stand and do God's will when everybody is out of God's will. In distresses, meaning that you're stressed on every side. Perplexed on every side. Amen. But he said, for Christ's sake, it's all for God, it's all for Jesus that I am in prosecution and in distress. Because he said, when he's weak, he know he's made strong. Why? Because of that throne that was thrown that's been put in his side. Because it is grace. It is the grace of God that is all sufficient. It is the grace of God that is in that thorn that keeps him humble. That keeps him above measures and things that God would have him to do. But he knows it's only in his weaknesses that make him strong. But guess what, people of God? We don't even want to identify our weaknesses. We want people just to know our strengths. But let me help you today. If you begin to start and allow, now making sure that it's the right people. But when you begin to allow the right people to understand your weaknesses, then maybe they can help you so that your weaknesses can begin to be strengthened, amen, in order for you to even help um, strengthen your other weaknesses, amen. Like most people used to tell me like, oh, you can write very well. You know, you can put together a proposal, a, a business plan. You know how to just lay it all out. I need you to edit this. I need you to edit that. But they didn't understand and know that writing was one of my weaknesses. I knew that when I was in school and college, I was glad when my professors will put pressure on my writing. Because it allowed me to be able to be strengthened in my writing. While they thought that I was so strong in writing, I knew that really in reality, that was my weakness. So as I began to write more and more, and I will always have somebody edit and read over what I wrote. And still today, before I do something, I have somebody, I have an editor that does that. Look, write, look over everything I write. And every time when he does, it feels so good when he come back and say, you got at least two, three mistakes. You know why? Because that lets me know that back then I had maybe a hundred mistakes. But don't you know it's okay to have a mistake? Because we're not perfect, amen. And I know that that was one of my weaknesses, but everybody else thought that I was so smart. That I was so educated and writing. And yes, now God has improved my writing. And I can write out some stuff. But it's the revelation of wisdom of God that it pours it into me that sometimes I don't even know what I'm writing until after I get finished writing. And then when I get finished writing, when I read it, I'm like, wow, I wrote that error? Like, I really didn't write that. But the Spirit of God, do me, use my hand to write it. So sometimes I surprise myself. Like, I wrote that. Amen. That's my weaknesses. Amen. That makes me strong. Amen. Those those same things that let us know that we as human are weak. Not weak like in the sense to where we're like lacking something or weak. But it's okay because in our weakness, God is able to strengthen us. And that's why God is not able to strengthen us because we don't want to reveal our weaknesses. We want everybody to feel and know that we're so strong, that we got it all together, that we can stand up, that we can do it. But it's okay to let somebody know your weakness. Why? Because it will allow you to allow your needs to be met. Amen. See, God's power is his unchanging character. See, Paul knew 
from his personal experiences. Remember I talked about the road of Damascus, amen. See, that good intention and personal effort was not enough. We need grace, not power. We want power. The church want power. Leaders want power. Everybody want power. But it's not the power that we should want. Because really, if you understand scriptures, uh, scriptures, scriptures, <laughs> Amen. I thought I was talking about shrimp. I ate so many shrimp yesterday. <laughs> Amen. I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm thinking about, I ate so many, really, literally. We went out and we fellowship scriptures. Okay, y'all. And somebody had left some shrimps on their plate. And I was like, do you want them? <laughs> so I ate those shrimps too. Amen. So I think I had too many shrimps yesterday. I don't know, y'all. But I'm thinking about shrimps right now. But anyway. <laughs> If you know in the scriptures, God has already given us what, Eric? Power. He's already given us power. But the power that he has given us is to what? Raise the dead. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. Amen? Nowhere in the Bible, correct me if I'm wrong, if it says that you need the power to run the church. You need the power to overlook your husband or wife. You need the power to oversee Mm-mm. Now we need grace. We need grace. Because it's the grace, amen, that gives us the power to do what we need to do. Amen. Amen. God's grace and power and glory is all that we need. In God. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have anything to say about the glory? What about you, Eric? Something we can add to what I've said that I may have missed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all come in here and just be so relaxed. Let me know I'm doing some good teaching then, okay? But still, I need some interaction, y'all. Amen. God wants to show all mankind, amen, Believers and unbelievers alike that he has the power. Amen. And that the victories belong to him and not to us. Amen. He wanted, he wanted Paul to know that only when Paul relies, when only Paul relied on God, grace, his strength and power, he was able to defeat his opposition. Don't you know when we lean on God? And allow God to fight our battles. He always win. Amen. See Paul got it. He understood that his personal weaknesses. Provided a venue. For God to display his strength. Amen. See it says my grace. Is sufficient. Amen. See it explains clearly that God's grace. Is continually. And presently providing to us. When we lean on him. And allow him to operate in our lives. It is not providing once or just twice. But if we move out the way and let God move in our lives, it's provided every and any time we need it. Amen. It's available to us. It's sitting right there waiting on us. But what happens is we want to use our own power and our own strength. When God is saying, just give me your weaknesses and I'll strengthen you. So on today, I leave you with this. Write down your weaknesses. Pray to God and ask God to help you in your weaknesses. That he will make you strong. And don't be afraid to write it down. Because sometimes we want everybody to think that we so powerful. We so educated. And sometimes we can't even read. You know, I meet a lot of people that are very knowledgeable because they watch CNN and SPN and Fox News and all those things. But when you put a book in front of them, they can't even read. Amen. They can't even write. Amen. So you need to ask God to help you in your weaknesses. If you weaken doing the work of God, Lord, strengthen me. Give me the grace to be a good usher. Give me a grace to be a good musician. 
give me a give me the grace to be the right pastor that I need to be to love the people. Amen. It's only by his grace that we're able to know that it is God that's able to take or remove. But you know, I hate to say it, he know that human beings are so fickle. He know that they are switch up on them. So that's why he keeps the thorn in the flesh. I don't care how much you ask God to remove it. I don't care how long you ask God to remove it. I don't care when you ask God to remove it. That thorn is going to always be in your flesh. You know why? Because his grace is sufficient. He knows how to humble you. He knows how to keep you in a place to where you got to keep coming back to him. See, if he give it all to you, then you won't have to come. So that's why he keep it in your side so that, and not just literally your side. Let me, let me, let me clear that. But your bone in your flesh is things that you want sometimes to get rid of, but you just can't do it. Amen. God keeps that because he said his grace is sufficient. So when we come back, we'll finish it up, 14. So I ask you all to read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14 through 21. Amen. Because we're going to come back and talk about the love for the church. I think we all want to talk about the love for the church. Amen. Because we need the love for the church. Amen. So... I'm going to ask two questions. See if y'all was listening. And we're going to close. Amen. What is the thorn that Paul described? Now see, y'all, I know y'all read this over and over. This ain't the first time I told y'all to read chapter 12. So y'all know chapter 12, right? Y'all know about the thorn, right? Eric, what is the thorn that Paul described in chapter 12? We just talked about it in verse 10. It was the distresses, the prosecutions, his, him being in need, the reproaches, the infirmities. It was all for Christ's name. Say amen. And what was the result of Paul's petition to God to remove it? What was his petition to God to remove it? What did Paul say or do and ask God to do to remove it? Mavis, what was the result of Paul petition to God to remove that thorn? What did he say? What was the petition? It's an eight. He pleaded with the Lord three times that it may depart from him. That's that's the are you paying attention? Because I'm gonna come back next week and ask you the same question. Amen. That was the petition. He pleaded. What do you mean when you plead, babies? Yes, he begged the Lord. Lord, remove this from me three times. Amen. That it may depart from him. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we'll close up. You heard me, Father. We come to you and we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We praise your name, oh God. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. Lord, we could not do it without you. We thank you for the word that have come on today. We give you glory. We thank you that the word has fallen on good ground. Bless this service, oh God, as we move right through. Amen. Bless our tithes and offering. Bless the praise and worship. Bless the word that will come forth in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. God, I ask you, oh God, to even touch our pastor, oh God, that is not here on today. Earnest, oh God. Touch his body in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Give him strength in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. And touch all those, oh God, that may not be full of well in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to move right into our um, Sunday service. And as we move right into it, I'm going to read Psalm 61. Amen. And then we're going to have um, the praise and worship team to come forth.
to do our praise and worship, and then I will call David, our MC for today, to come and MC the rest of the service for us. Um, if you can turn to Psalm 61, amen. Amen. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter, shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life. His years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So I will sing praises to your name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. Amen. Amen. As we go ahead into our Sunday services, I'm, our service, I'm going to ask Mavis and Linda and all the rest of the choir members, amen, if they can come and lead us in praise and worship, amen. As we begin our Sunday service, we welcome everybody that is live with us, and we hope that you enjoy today's service, and we thank you for joining us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
wonderful and powerful praise and worship this morning. God bless you. Praise and worship team. God bless you so much. Amen. At this moment, we are going to prepare ourselves for our Titan offering. Hallelujah. We are going to prepare ourselves for our Titan offering. Like I used to say all the time, whenever I get a chance to stand over here, it is one of the most important aspects of our lives. Hallelujah. Giving up money in any sense. Hallelujah. It is very difficult. Of course, we all know. Amen. Because we tend to have too many ideas and potential before us. Which, in other sense, even the money that the church that comes in every week. Hallelujah. And even some all those projections. Hallelujah. But then, the good work that we serve teaches us that one thing of our aim is what we need to pray to me. Hallelujah. Amen. And in the end, it's going to bless us. Hallelujah. The one thing that you've given out every day, probably that might be the reason why you still have a job. Probably that might be the reason why you are here this morning. Probably that might be the reason why you've not been to a doctor for the past years. Hallelujah. Yes. There's more blessing in those things, one thing that we're going to give out this morning. Hallelujah. And I know today you're going to pay you to that advice. Amen. If you are ready, you call an apostle. To stand on behalf of the church and pray for this morning before we go time off. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for our tithes and offering on today. Bless those that have it to give, those that don't have the desire, bless them as well. Press down, shape it together, run it over. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Once again, we're going to invite our praise and worship team to lead us as we joyfully and happily turn to the music that we're going to bless. As we bring our time to offer. Amen.
God bless you so much for being an obedient child in this house. Amen. I know times are hard, times are difficult. In the economic sense, things doesn't seem to make up. Hallelujah. But in all those things, the good Lord finds his own ways to bless us. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to hear the word of God in a very short moment. Hallelujah. We're going to hear the word of God in a very short moment. Hallelujah. I know the head pastor is ready. Amen. I think I thought a pastor, you said pastor wasn't feeling well, right? No, no, I said Pastor Irma. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I said to myself, Pastor, if you're feeling well, you're not feeling well, you're going to come over. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Amen. I know, when it is is not feeling well, I know the antidote. Amen. Amen. Every Sunday, like I keep saying, I used to tell my wife, we have this traditional food. Each and every Sunday, you will go throughout the year and never fall sick. That's my secret. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Before the word of God comes our way, we're going to pay some sort of respect to the message. Hallelujah. And I'm going to invite my dear sister Linda with the support of my dear babies to give us one song. Just to pay the for the message. Hallelujah. Amen.
stayed on the other side of the sea so that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not got into the boat with his disciples. But that, they, that his disciples had gone away alone. Amen. Then some boats from Timorans came near the place where he had eaten the bread that the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. Amen. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Verily I told you, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you, you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. Which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Amen. Amen. Jesus said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? Hallelujah. What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives, who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Hallelujah. Then they said to Jesus, Say, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Amen. Amen. We've been discussing about enlarging our territory. Amen. Amen. Enlarging our territory. And we said that territory is a place, a place that you are able to take dominion. You are able to control the place that you control in your life. It comes to your territory. Hallelujah. Your territory, enlarging your territory. And whenever you want to enlarge your territory, Whenever you want to multiply things that you can control in life, you need wealth, power, wisdom, and authority. Hallelujah. In order for you to control that which you have, you might have something, but if you don't have knowledge over it, you cannot assess it. 
We cannot control it. Hallelujah. You might have something, but sometimes you have it, but you don't have authority over it. So you can't have full control or you can't have control over it. Amen. For example, you borrow somebody's car. Amen. Even though you have the car, but you don't have control over the car. Amen. Whenever you are using the car, you are very, very conscious and very careful of what you are doing. But when it is your own car, you use it how you want to use it. Hallelujah. Amen. So if we do not have authority, we might have something, but if we don't have authority over it, we don't have full control over the thing. Amen. Amen. We might have something, but we don't have wisdom on the thing that we have. Amen. Amen. If we have something and we don't have wisdom about it, we can never have full control about what we have. Amen. Amen. That is why it is necessary for us to have wisdom. To have understanding. Amen. That is why it is necessary for us to have power, authority. Amen. But having all these things, there is one thing that is very important. Seeking all these things, there is one thing that is very important that I wanted to talk about today. That is motive. Hallelujah. Turn to your brother and say motive. Amen. Amen. Motive. These people went to Jesus for miracles. Amen. Amen. They never went to Jesus for bread. As we read the previous weeks. It was the disciples that suggested that the people are hungry. So, Jesus should give them something to eat. Hallelujah. They never went to Jesus for bread. I believe some of them went to Jesus to see the kind of person he is because they heard the miracles that he is performing in and out the city. Amen. I believe some of them went to see Jesus, to hear his words of wisdom. Amen. I believe some of them went to Jesus to get him. Each one of them has his own motive for going to Jesus. But when they went with a motive, some of them went to get understanding in the word of God. Some of them went to see who Jesus is. This Jesus that everybody is talking about in town. Somebody says that he healed him from leper. Somebody says that he healed him from um, his infirmity. Somebody says that he healed him. Somebody says that he, he, he was able to walk on the sea. So everybody has what he's saying. So we are going to see the Jesus, this Jesus. But they never went with an intent of having bread. Amen. The Bible says that when Jesus saw them, he was filled with compassion and he healed them. He ministered to them. And when it was time for them to go, the disciples came and said that these people are hungry. Let them go. So you see that it was never their motive. But when they were able to get bread and eat it, and they went back home, they came back with a different motive. 
motive, you will never find him. Hallelujah. Amen. You will never find him. Your motive for seeking God is very important. So you see that the Tommy said that whenever we seek him with all our hearts, Amen. When we seek him with all our hearts, we will find him. Amen. The people were seeking after Jesus, but they had the wrong motive. What is motive? A reason for doing something, especially one that is hidden or not obvious. Amen. A reason for doing something. Amen. Amen. Especially that one that is not hidden or obvious. Amen. Amen. Reason for doing something. And whatever encourages you, whatever gives you joy to do what you are doing becomes a reason for the way. Amen. Amen. Reason is a cause, explanation, or justification for an action or event. Amen. Your reason for coming. Your reason for supporting Pastor Joe, your reason for being in the presence of God, your reason, your motive. Hallelujah. Amen. Why are you coming? So when they met Jesus, they said to Jesus, We have been looking for you. We have been seeking after you. Jesus said, I am well, it's good. That you have been seeking after me, but you have not been seeking after me with the right motive. Jesus said, I know that you are seeking after me, not because of signs and wonders. I know that you are seeking after me, not because you have come to worship me. I know that you are seeking after me, not because you are you want to go to heaven. I know that you are seeking after me, not because you want to hear the words of the, the encouragement and the words of wisdom that God has given me, has sent me to give you hallelujah. But you are seeking after me for the bread that I gave you yesterday. Hallelujah. Most of us, we are seeking after God, but we are seeking Him for Him for with the wrong motive. And because we are seeking with the wrong motive, it is very hard for us, even though we are in His presence, but He cannot acknowledge us in His presence. He cannot do anything with us because we have the wrong motive. The Bible says that we ask, but we ask and miss because we do not ask with the wrong motive. If we are going to our motive, if we are going to change our daughter, if we are going to change our reason now and have the right reason for being in the presence of God, that God is going to change the situations in our lives, that God is about to help us and learn our territory tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. What is your reason? What is your motive for being in the presence of God? They said that we have been looking after you. We have been seeking for you. And when we went to where you were the other time, we could not find you. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, that, Yes, I know that you have been seeking after me. It is good that you have been seeking after me. But you are seeking after me because of bread. Hallelujah. It is good to seek after me because of prayer, but you are seeking for the wrong prayer. Hallelujah. The reason why you are seeking after me, the reason or the motive was for prayer, but the motive was for earthly bread. Hallelujah. But Jesus said at this time, I'm not giving you earthly bread. Hallelujah. But I want to give you heavenly bread. Amen. What is your motive? What is your reason for being in the house of the Lord? What is your reason that you want to enlarge your territory? What is the reason 
behind the door what your motive behind the job that you are looking for hallelujah what is the motive behind the, the, the man that you want to marry what is the motive behind the people that you want to connect with hallelujah what is the motive to be in the presence of God it is very important your motive you can do something and be hundred percent right. Amen. But if you do it with a wrong motive, it doesn't matter how good, it doesn't matter how excellent, it doesn't matter how people approach you. If you do it with a wrong motive, you are, you, you are it's like, it, it's better you did not even do what? Do it. Motive. If you come to the presence of God, and you donate thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, hundreds of dollars, tens of dollars, and you are donating with the wrong motive. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why when you read my chapter 6, it talks about prayer, it talks about fasting, it talks about how to come to the presence of God. But you see that all of them, they say that do not do it in the sight of man. Hallelujah. Do not do it that men may see that oh, you are also good in giving. Do not do it that you, you, people may see that you are also good in prayers. Hallelujah. That people may see you and acknowledge you. But with the right kind of motive. What is your motive? You can pray all kinds of prayers. Lord, enlarge my territory. Speak all kinds of tongues. God, there are tongues and every tongue that you know. And, and so all kinds of things that you want to sow. But if you have the wrong motive, you will never succeed in life. You will get there, but you will come back. Amen. You will get there, but you cannot stay there. Amen. They follow Jesus, but they did not get what they wanted. You can see what you are seeking for. You can get what you want to you are seeking for, but you will not be able to sustain it with a wrong motive. Amen. Sometimes people come to me and say, Pastor, pray for me, I need a job. Hallelujah. And you ask them, why do you want this job? Why do, why do you need this job? They say, I just want the job. Hallelujah. They don't even know the motive. They don't even know the reason why they need a job. Hallelujah. It's necessary for you to know the reason why you need a job. It is necessary for you to know the reason why you are helping this ministry. It is necessary for you to know the reason why you are worshiping in this ministry. Amen. What is your motive? What is your reason? For seeking after God, for being in the presence of God. Is your reason that which will take you to heaven? Is your reason that which will step up the heavens? Or to give you a product your heart desire? Or your reason is the one to satisfy your own selfish desire? Amen. That's the test that you ask, but you ask a bit. Because you ask to satisfy your own selfish desire. When the wrong you are asking with the wrong motive. You ask, but you do not receive. Because you are asking with the wrong motive. The Bible said that we should ask and we shall be received. We should seek, seek, and we will find. But why are we seeking, but we are not finding? Why are we struggling, but we are not able to get there? Why is it that we have been struggling with all our mind, all our heart, but we are not getting there? Because we have the wrong motive. Amen. Amen. Maybe you see a lady in the church you want to marry. And because of you follow the lady to the church. 
And if you come to church and that lady does not come to church, or that man does not come to church, you don't even feel comfortable. It doesn't matter how the anointing of God will flow. It doesn't matter how good the word of God is. It doesn't matter how the power of God will flow through the worship. It doesn't matter how excellent the word will come. You will still complain. Ah, today church was not good. Hallelujah. Today I did not feel the presence of God. You are lying. It's not because you did not feel the presence of God. Because you did not see that lady. Hallelujah. Amen. What is your reason? Some of us, when we come to church and we don't, we don't see pastor, we don't feel good. If I knew pastor was going here, I would not have come. <laughs> Why? Is it that pastor, they don't come to church? And some of the times we even get mad at ourselves. Some of us, when we come to church and we do not see Koku and, 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 and a place on the instruments, we get mad. Today, church is not going to be good. We will not have instruments. <laughs> Hallelujah. What motivates you? What encourages you to come to the presence of God? What is your motivation? Some of us, when we come to church and we do not see our friend, that we will all we always gossip with on the phone. It means church is not good. What is your motive? Hallelujah. What is your reason? What is motivating you to be in the presence of God? What motivated the people to come back to seek after Jesus was to seek after bread. Hallelujah. But they were seeking after the wrong bread. They were seeking after the wrong thing. Most of the time we are seeking after Jesus, but our reason for seeking is wrong. It makes it wrong for us to seek after Him. And it's wrong to seek after the right thing with the wrong motive. Amen. And it's wrong to seek after the right thing with the wrong motive. And it's wrong to do the right thing with the wrong motive. It is wrong to receive the right thing with the wrong motive. It is wrong to do the right thing with the wrong motive. What is your motive? What is encouraging you? What is motivating you? Some of you in the prophecy that pastor gives that brings you to church. When you come to church, one man, two man, three man, the pastor has not been prophesying. Ah, why is it that pastor has not been prophesying these days? Ah, the church is boring. Ah, 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 ah. Why is it that pastor is not, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not, I think pastor is not praying enough. Huh? I think pastor is becoming weaker. I think the anointing is, has left pastor. And that is why he has not been preaching and prophesying in the church. Huh? Ah, I don't even feel good by the church. Hallelujah. What is your motive? Amen. Motive is very important. You know, sometimes murder is the worst thing, the, the worst sin that someone can commit in a community. Amen. Sometimes we say we are killing you giving you um, life imprisonment. Sometimes they give you the harsh like sentence in the community. But sometimes when you kill with the right motive and you are able to prove yourself beyond reasonable doubt that you had the right motive to kill the person you kill. You will set loose. Hallelujah. You will not free. 
and walk around. Envy, when you do the wrong thing, if it is with the right motive, that justifies you. Sometimes what you may be doing is wrong, but you have the right motive. It is better to do the wrong thing with the right motive than to do the good thing with the wrong motive. Somebody might say, what is pastor saying? What, what is pastor trying to say? What is your motivation? What is your reason for doing what you are doing? Amen. I remember I went to a cinema and we were watching how the white supremacists were treating the slaves and the room was very silent. Hallelujah. And one Black man that was a little bit educated mm-hmm. rebelled against the white people and began to kill them secretly. And immediately he began to rebel against the people. I saw that in at the movie theater everybody was clapping. Even though what he was doing was wrong, but because he had a right motive, everybody was that now he, he is doing something that he is standing up for himself. But it was the wrong thing that he was doing. Everybody began to clap. Even the white people in the room began to they, 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 they began to clap. Why? Motive is very important. Why are you buying stuff for pasta? Amen. Why are you always coming to church? Amen. Maybe I might see you and approach you and say, oh, well done, you are doing good. But if you are doing it with the wrong motive, it doesn't matter the kind of blessing that I will pray, I will, I will pour on your life. It will never function in your life. And sometimes even the blessing will turn into a curse in your life. Amen. So Jesus said, I know that you have come. I know that you have come not because of signs and wonders, but because you want bread. Amen. I know that you have come not because of signs and wonders, but because he said that I told you you are looking for me not because you saw signs. But because you ate, you are filled of the loaves. Hallelujah. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Amen. Amen. Jesus told them that they are waiting for coming. In other words, Jesus was trying to say that your reason for coming is not good. Let me give you a good reason why you should seek for me. They said that we have been seeking for you. He said, well, you are seeking for me because of this. But you don't need to seek for me because of this. But seek for me because of this. Do not seek for me for bread that will perish, but bread that is what? Eternal. Amen. Amen. So, the reason God is giving here, or the reason Jesus is giving here, that this is the reason why you should seek after me, is that you should seek for bread that is eternal. Amen. Amen. Let's look at this very well. Jesus let us say that I, I am the bread of life. Amen. When they begin to ask 
Jesus for that kind of brain. Amen. Then when they begin to ask Jesus that we want to teach us so that we will do the works of God. Jesus said that I am the bread of life. Now, when you translate it in literal point of view, if you are the bread of life and I'm seeking for you, that means I'm seeking for what? I am seeking for if you are the bread of life or you are the bread that do not perish. And I, I come to you and I say that I'm seeking for you. That means that literally I'm seeking for the life that do not perish. Amen. Amen. If Jesus is the bread of life and they came to Jesus and said that Jesus we are looking for you. And Jesus said oh, okay you are looking for me. But you are looking for the wrong thing. Anyway. In other words, Jesus was trying to get the attention that even though they are seeking after him, they are seeking after him with a wrong motive. Amen. Because if Jesus is the bread of life and they are seeking after the bread of life and they come to see Jesus and Jesus says, that, Oh, you are seeking after me because of this. And, and your reason for seeking after me is not, there should not be a reason why you seek after me. Amen. Amen. What is your reason? What is motivating you? So what was motivating them to seek after Jesus was the bread that he gave them physically to eat. So when Jesus said that you need bread that will not perish, they said that what is the sign? They were still trying to persuade Jesus to give them a bread that would do what? Perish. They said that what is the sign? What can you do? Show us a sign. Do something. Just, just do something for us to get bread to eat. To give us that bread that will not perish. Amen. To a skin for bread that will perish. Life that will perish. The same way most of us we are here in the presence of God. We are here today. We are seeking for money that will perish. We are seeking for joy that will perish. We are seeking for things that are good. You know, the bread, bread is good. Jesus did not condemn them for seeking for bread, but he condemned them for seeking for the wrong bread. That is bread that will do what? Perish. It is good to seek after money. It is good to seek after women. Because after all, you are going to get married. Hallelujah. It is good to seek after success. It is good to seek after things that are noble, things that are excellent in life. You know, people believe that if you are a pastor and you are doing the work of God, you should be driving some tedious car and that when you span it, it will be like meh, 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 and you go two, three kilometers and then you, you get a, a puncture in it, hallelujah, and your time will burst, hallelujah. That is when people say that, oh, this man is a true man of God. But when you are living in a good car, you say that, oh, this man, I don't think he is a true man of God. He is using the church money for, for fresh things, hallelujah. And it's good to seek after them. Amen. But what is your motive? Amen. Are you seeking for these things that will perish? Or you are seeking for one that will not also perish? Amen. They came and Jesus gave them bread. Jesus gave them bread that will perish. Remember, the Bible says that when they were going home, they even carried some wood. But the next day, it perished and they came back. 
God can give you the most beautiful woman on this earth. In the house of the Lord. But one day, one day, that man, woman or woman is going to do us. Die. Hallelujah. God can give you the most powerful resources on this earth. But one day, one day, you are going to die and live it. Hallelujah. One day, one day, you will live it and go. Hallelujah. But the only thing that you cannot miss in life, uh, the only thing that you cannot lose in life is Jesus, the eternal life. And that is what God or Jesus was trying to ask them to seek. Amen. So if you read downwards, you see that when most of them get offended and left. And Jesus said, what are you also doing? The rest that left. Are you also following them? Are you also doing? They said, no. Because we know that you have eternal Life. In other words, we are not also going because we are seeking for what? Eternal life. Amen. Amen. It is good to see, come to the house of God, pray for money, pray for cars, pray for wisdom, pray for understanding, pray for green car, pray for everything that you want, but your major reason should be seeking after the presence of God. Eternal life. Amen. If you have Jesus with a wrong right motive, you can control every aspect of your life. Even in the prison. Even in the jungle. Even in the lion's den. Even in the fire. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like Daniel, whatever situation that you find yourself in, God will let you wish to come to you. Amen. What are we seeking after? What is our motive for doing what we are doing? Why are we helping pastor? Amen. Do we have a second agenda? Or we just want to promote the word of God, the word of God. Because we want to go to heaven. So we are doing it to go, or we are doing it when it has a position. Hallelujah. It's so bad to get a leadership position in a church. But what is your motive? It's very important. Is it just because you want the leadership position? That is why you are trying to please the pastor. Is it just you want to take control over, over certain areas of the church? You, have, you want to have a say in the church. That is why you are, you, you are doing what you are doing in the church. Or you want to go to heaven. Amen. Or you want an eternal life. Is it because you want people to see that you can also sing? You have a good voice. Hallelujah. I remember I went to one church. And you know I love sitting at the back. And I was supposed to preach. So when I went, the pastor was not there and they were about to start a service and they were praying. So I went and sit at the back. And these two ladies were very angry discussing the service for the last two weeks. And they didn't know that I was the preacher for that day. That's prayer master. They were discussing their prayer master. I don't know why she did not allow me to sing. Last two weeks Sunday that I brought my beautiful clothing. I brought my designer wear. She refused to let me stand in front of the people to sing. And as a matter of fact, they were the way they were complaining me down. I was like, e. So, the reason why you want to come and sing is because you have a nice coat. And the day that you don't have a nice coat, they want you to come and sing, Oh, my voice. My voice. I have a problem with my voice. Can you let Goku Mame sing? Can you let uh, um, so, so and so sing? But the day that you have a nice coat, 
Empat terpenting. Baik tu. What is your point? What is your point? Why are you coming to the house of the Lord? Amen. Sometimes we worry about certain things too much. And we miss our blessing. Because we don't have control over these things. Did you come to the church of God to control the will of God? Did you come to the house of God to show your beauty? Did you come to the house of God to just make friends? Hallelujah. Sometimes you might feel like, oh, when I still, uh, my wife will worry me, when I still, the kids will worry me, when I still, so let me go, let me go to church. Hallelujah. And leave them at home. So that I'll have my, at least I'll have some of my What is your motive? What is your reason? What is your purpose for doing what you're doing? It's very important. And it's very, very important that we have the right motive in life. Stand on your feet. He said that we ask, but we don't ask amiss. And we do not receive. We are praying. That every motive, the songwriter said, I have made it too small in my eyes. But now, I know. Now that you know that if you have the wrong motive, and you come to the presence of God, you will never be able to make it. Speak to God. Tell God that He should give you grace. The right motive. Push you into the right motive. The Bible said that the Lord provoked Pharaoh to pursue the people of Israel. This time, you are also praying that the Lord will provoke you to pursue the right motive. Right motive. The right motive. Hallelujah. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And we are praying that you lead us not into temptations. You will lead us not into the wrong motive. As you said that when we pray, we should pray that you lead us not into temptations. And in our prayer, that you lead us not into temptations, but lead us into the right motive. Lead us into the right process. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for the moment. Amen. We are still letting you know uh, our deliverance service every last Saturday of the month. Every last Saturday of the month is our deliverance service. Amen. Make sure that you come and support. You come for deliverance. And every Friday, 11 to 1 11 to 2 11 to 2 is our midnight prayers Amen our midnight prayers it is only prayer and worship prayer and worship so come and pray come and seek after the things of God and I know that your life will never be the same Amen. Amen. Start on your feet. The Lord bless you. And I keep you. The Lord bless you.
Yeshua shine upon you and you shall forgive. The Lord has some time for you and then keep you in perfect peace. The peace of God, that's what has to understand. It. I put the name of God upon your life that you may be blessed in your going in and in your coming out. In Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. God bless you for coming. Bless your grace.